Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Austria. Welcome, Europe, to this uh, further edition of uh, our Europe Week uh, debate marathon. I'm very, very grateful that today we have an absolute highlight of the series. Uh, Paul Schmidt and I are happy to welcome uh, two champions of European economic and industrial policy. Uh, Austrian Minister Margaret Schamburg, who is joining us here from Vienna, and uh, EU Industrial Policy and Internal Market Commissioner Thierry Breton, who is of French nationality and is joining us uh, from uh, Brussels, where he's just coming out of the meeting of uh, commissioners. Um, I would like to say a few words about both of you. I think you don't need a lot of further introduction, but I think you have both something in common. You're both economic politicians who actually know what you're talking about because you both have been in the private sector as CEOs of companies. Uh, therefore, you bring a lot of experience into the public sector and probably an experience and an understanding of the econ economy that we need in these times, particularly uh, after being affected by the corona crisis. I'm happy to welcome you here today uh, with Paul Schmidt, the Secretary General of the Austrian Society for European Politics in Europe Week. And uh, we will engage with you now in a number of questions. And then we will also take some questions that we uh, are receiving via the social media. And Paul, you have the first question. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Martin. Let me uh, also welcome you, uh, Minister Schramberg and Commissioner Breton, to, to our EU talk today. Um, it is an honor for us. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get into the nitty-gritty details of our discussion, uh, can, I, can I just start with uh, a, a personal question? How do you actually, uh, maybe I, I would start with uh, Minister Schramberg, how do you live through these uh, demanding times? What are your personal experience with the situation? Well, thank you first for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here, especially with uh, Thierry Breton. Um, so I'm very happy that I can join you on this, uh, uh, on this session. Uh, for me personally, I can remember uh, the day when I first uh, realized that this coronavirus came into our lives or into our world, and at that time it was still uh, far away in China. Um, but my parents are around 80 years old, so my father is having his uh, 80th birthday this summer and we had expected to celebrate and to have a big party with him. And then I suddenly saw this virus coming up and I already at that point had a very strong negative feeling about it and thought, hmm, what would happen to the health of our people in Europe? Also, will it come to Europe or will it not come? And therefore, I was very uh, early aware of this. And second thought, of course, was already, what does it mean for the people working in Europe, for all those people in the companies? And uh, this is how I first uh, um, saw the virus and uh, we saw it then coming uh, up to Europe. Um, so this is uh, something which has um, yeah, accompanied me since then and of course, like all of us, I hope very much for um, finding medicine or um, uh, something uh, to, to protect us from this virus for the future. But at the moment, we are of course all inside this crisis, still in this crisis, so we tend to forget about it because it's getting better and better, especially in Austria, but still we need to be careful both for the health of people, but also, of course, for the economic side. Both is, uh, is not one against the other, but it is uh, uh, as important to stay healthy as it is also to have a good life and to have jobs. Mr. Bato, how do you do in these difficult times? Well, um, first, uh, like every one of us, uh, no one was expecting uh, to uh, to live uh, uh, in his life a crisis of this magnitude, no one. Even if uh, Martin, you mentioned that I had a previous life in business, even if I was also minister of finance before, um, and um, and I know pretty well China. Um, I have been, by the way, in my previous life uh, one of the first one to uh, to install. It was uh, in the late 90, 90. Uh, the first factor is in the, in the Pearl River, Detroit, between uh, um, uh, Chengzhen and Guangzhou. And uh, I had at that time many, many factories. I was running a, a big um, uh, conservatory company. So I know China very well. And um, uh, to tell you the truth, 
when um, we start to see the first uh, uh, signal and, and, uh, of what was happening in, in China, um, early January, I came to see uh, Ursula von der Leyen in her office, and I say, um, uh, President, uh, what's happening is important. It's important for China, it's important for the world. Uh, we know that, unfortunately, we had also this kind of, of crisis in the past. Um, and I think it's important that, uh, that, that uh, somebody is coming to China. So I said, I volunteer. And I said, um, maybe it would be a good idea if, I, if, 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 if somebody from the Commission comes to China. I said, oh, it's a good idea. And then, unfortunately, Martin, uh, I wasn't able to go because I had some restrictions. You know the Commission probably better than I do. And uh, when, 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 when restrictions are put in the Commission, they're extremely tough. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, especially for, 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 for a new Commission like me. So I wasn't able to come. And I regret because I know that at this time it's important to send the signal which are necessary. And then, of course, after uh, we, saw, uh, we saw the pandemic and we saw the pandemic coming in, uh, in, in Europe. And, um, and yes, we started to realize when, uh, when we saw what, what was happening in, uh, in, in, in Italy, the, the magnitude of it. And, um, and now, of course, uh, I'm like uh, Margaret. Uh, I, I have only my, my, my father, but he's, he's 97, uh, Margaret. My, uh, so, mm, okay. so, so, so mm -hmm. but, uh, but he's extremely well. He's a scientist. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to come to see him. But uh, for the first time, uh, for the past two months almost, but for the first time, uh, finally, uh, wearing the, the, the right PPE, I've been able to see him last week, so it's fine. And my, my daughter lives in Berlin with uh, my grandchildren, so I cannot see them. My other daughter lives in London, I cannot see them. My son lives live in, 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 in Lausanne, Switzerland, I cannot see him. But hopefully we'll be able to be, uh, to be again, uh, again together. But like, like every family, I mean, uh, we, where to stay home and uh, and uh, not to see each other. Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, within the next few weeks we'll be able to to see each, each other again. But we all know that we will have to live uh, for many months, many more months with the virus, and and, and to uh, to be extremely cautious. It's absolutely not over. We know that it's not over. Thank you to both for sharing this with our audience. I think it is useful to know that everybody in Europe is uh, suffering under this crisis, is affected by it, and of course from Vienna here all the. Uh, best of wishes to your parents, Mrs. Schlumberg and Mr. Mr. Breton. I think we are all uh, as concerned about our parents, and I think it's important that we keep that in mind in all this big politics that, of course, has to be dealt with in parallel. Um, you both are, in addition to being human beings, uh, experienced <laughs> business people and ministers and now commissioner, uh, um, uh, very, very uh, well aware of the economic situation. Uh, Mr. Breton, you come this morning out of the uh, video conference of the, with the commissioners where the uh, uh, spring forecast uh, has been uh, discussed and announced. Uh, and we see, of course, something that uh, we see on the health side. Uh, all of Europe is uh, dramatically affected. Uh, by the health crisis, but also economically. We have a true symmetric shock. Uh, uh, and uh, I think I, for the audience, I repeat the figures that the European Union is expected uh, to shrink in its GDP by 7.4% this year. This is uh, much bigger than any other crisis that we had before. Austria is on the slightly better side, but minus 5.5% are not a moment of joy for anybody. And we have some countries in Europe uh, who are shrinking even by 9 or almost 10%. So this is a big crisis without any doubt. It is not caused by anybody. And I wanted to ask both of you um, how you as experienced economic politicians uh, with a background in the private and public sector, what is your first reaction, what we Europeans should do now in this crisis? What are the first two things uh, that we Europeans need to do together to get out of this crisis? Because this is a big crisis. Uh, we need political intervention. So what would you like Europe to do in these days? Huh? Perhaps, Mr. Breton, we start with you as you come right out of the Commission meeting. And then uh, we have uh, Mrs. Schramberg who tells us how Austria can support your efforts. Huh? No, um, uh, you, you, you're right, Martin. We, we, we had these figures to be released today, uh, and obviously that's just uh, uh, an estimation. Uh, could be worse. Uh, we don't know yet. You know that the, the, the ECB is uh, 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 is forecasting between five to, mi to minus five to, uh, to minus twelve. So I mean, uh, we have to be cautious. We have to be cautious. But you're absolutely right. 
it is the worst recession uh, uh, ever that we are uh, coping with now in Europe since, uh, since, 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 since we, 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 are, we are together uh, in Europe after World War II. So that's really uh, uh, an extremely uh, dramatic situation that we have to cope with. Um, so, um, um, what, what, what is the first thing I, I expected? I wrote immediately, as I just wanted to, to, to tell you, immediately when we, when we started to see this. You know, um, um, I'm in charge of the internal market, and, um, and of course the internal market is pretty well integrated, which is something that we, that we, that we did over the past decades. It's a big plus for, for, for us in Europe. And of course, my first reaction was to try to evaluate, to anticipate, what will be the impact? And of course, the impact will be absolutely huge uh, in, in many of our ecosystems, tourism, uh, culture, uh, automotive industry, uh, aircraft. Uh, many, many of our ecosystem, industrial ecosystem, are extremely, extremely uh, uh, strongly needed. And, and, and my first reaction was to say, was to, you know, I, I've been a former CEO, you, you, you said that, I've been also a former entrepreneur, and, and, I, and I know that in this very situation, the, the, the thing that we have to, to take care is liquidity. So we are in a huge liquidity crisis now, and we need to again to maintain our uh, our um, um, uh, economical ecosystem alive. And that's why uh, it, it's pretty strange, you know, uh, uh, because in my life I have been probably as a minister of finance uh, 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 in my country uh, the one who privatized. Uh, probably the most of any other finance minister, because I saw that uh, the, 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 the state had, at that time, nothing to do with companies. So I privatized a lot when I was minister of finance. And now today, it's a totally reverse situation. I'm encouraging all our member states to, 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 to act immediately. And as you know, the Commission immediately released uh, of course, uh, the, the the, the Maastricht criteria, of course, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was uh, hopefully, uh, it was uh, already planned in the, uh, in the, in the treaty, so we get rid of it, and, and then we encourage also uh, the, the member states to, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to intervene, including in companies, including with direct grants, or, 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 or even uh, taking position, equity positions, and I think it's extremely important that we all do this immediately, again, to, 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 to maintain our ecosystem alive, and also uh, to uh, maintain a level playing field between us in Europe. So we need to do this on a uh, sort of equal basis. It's extremely important. Uh, uh, all our ecosystems are fully integrated, and also uh, regarding what's happening outside of Europe, in the US or in, uh, in, in China, where, 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 where the US, for example, now, uh, uh, a huge plan, recovery plan, has been put in place, 2.2 plus 3, and it's almost 2.3 trillion dollars. And we need to do the same thing at the US. I'm fighting for that. We need probably to have a plan of this magnitude in, uh, in, in order to be able to, uh, to maintain, again, our ecosystems and also the level playing field between us and uh, between our main uh, partners, slash uh, competitors, uh, US and China. So uh, we are working now for this recovery plan and fund, and of course I'm pushing for uh, for for being able to have uh, uh, the kind of magnitude that others are doing. Thank you, Mr. Breton. Mr. Schramberg, 5.5 percent reduction of Austrian GDP because of the Corona crisis is, of course, on the one side because we give public health the priority, as the Austrian government, as all European governments have done, and I think this is very important. I think all human beings in Europe are grateful for these approaches, but on the other side, a big economic loss. Uh, what would you uh, want uh, Europe uh, and our member states to do together now uh, in the coming months to get out of this crisis sooner rather than later? Yes, uh, what, what is important, it's a world economic crisis. So we can see this in the figures which have just been published, that it's hitting uh, the countries in Europe, but also outside Europe, also China and also uh, the US. If we look at the Austrian figures, we are uh, um, on uh, minus 5.5%. Uh, um, so only uh, Luxembourg and uh, Poland are uh, better than us. So 
um, what it seems somehow is that if you have rather strict rules on uh, the health side, um, you uh, can be lucky. We do not know yet altogether, but you can start the uh, recovery a little bit earlier and you can uh, then have all the measures uh, to secure uh, both liquidity, as has already been mentioned uh, by the Commissioner, and uh, on the other hand, side jobs. And for jobs, we have created something uh, very special, which is a specialized short time work uh, program, uh, which uh, has functioned uh, very well and the, the companies have adopted it. So what we can see is that uh, if we see, if we also ask ourselves, there are some people asking, is it health, health versus economy? I think it's both. We need to make sure that we take care of the people uh, and have as many uh, as as many measures taken to have as uh, a few uh, dead people as possible, and on the other side uh, to recover as quickly as possible. And now we are in this uh, uh, recovery phase. We are in this. Uh, uh, comeback phase in Austria. We're preparing ourselves and we want to be ready within the next two weeks. So end of next week, beginning of the week after. Um, we are talking a lot to experts, uh, or to companies, um, to um, our social representatives, because none of us had this experience before. So what we need to collect is the best ideas to get out of this crisis. And these are local ideas and also European ideas. If I look to the European side, uh, it is important um, if I look what we would need uh, and what the companies tell me is to re-establish the single European market. Because this is something, the borders are an important topic at the moment. And it's not only for the transfer of goods, but also for the transfer of people. So what we would need is the establishing of uh, some sort of European rule. It cannot be on a bilateral basis, but we need based on health standards um, to establish rules which say, okay, if you achieve these health standards in your country, then we can re-establish the four freedoms uh, inside the European Union. And I think this is something which companies tell me what they urgently uh, would need. Um, a second topic is uh, we have initiated this, I have initiated this together with the Minister of Finance in Austria, is uh, the reform of the EU state aid rules, because now we have seen very good and quick reactions. However, we can be even better and do even better. And this is what we intend uh, by asking um, for a reform. And uh, this reform for us should come earlier than 2033. Uh, so this is also something very concrete uh, in the direction of Margaret Vestager, uh, also to say that we need this uh, reform. I give you concrete examples. I have companies, uh, there is a limit of 800,000 uh, euro uh, in these uh, reforms and we would need 2 million euro. This comes from the practical side. You said I was a CEO uh, as uh, Thierry was for many years and for 15 years and these companies give me the feedback and we see we would have to increase the limit. Or also that uh, we have uh, a softer definition for undertakings in difficulties because I have companies which we have to reject. These companies are searching for medicine, a medicine for the coronavirus, and they are not fulfilling the first uh, topic, like 50% of consumption of their capital. And we had to reject them, but they would be very important for the research part. So this is also something very concrete. And then I'm very convinced that competition law and procurement law, we need to have a look in this uh, phase. Both are very challenging parts. Um, how can we secure the European companies from unfriendly uh, takeovers? And second, how can European procurement law assist the companies? So it's not always needed to take money. Of course, we need a lot of money to establish liquidity. And we have a, a package of 38 uh, uh, billion yeah, euro. Uh, for the Austrian companies, but at the same time, there are topics where European Union and uh, the Commission could help us, which is not always money. And this is competition law, this is uh, procurement law, uh, this is the rules for uh, EU state aid, 
and uh, um, these are topics which can be taken uh, very quickly, I, I guess. Thank you, Minister. So there are a lot of uh, topics on the table to discuss. Uh, on a small footnote, and for organizational reasons, just let me remind the viewers that if you out there want to ask a question, please send us your comments or questions via social media, and we try to integrate them into the discussion. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, a lot of issues on the table. Uh, what, maybe, maybe you could start by, by telling us what is the situation with re-establishing the single market? What is the situation on the national borders? Where are we at the moment? And um, then I think Madam Minister took up two, two issues which uh, I'd want to respond to. The one issue was, um, will we be able to define this situation so in order to 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 have a, a level playing field within the sim single market and and what about what about the, the reform of state aid rules and competition and uh, procurement regulations or is yours okay um, uh, um, I, I'm sorry it was it was uh, I didn't listen very well all your questions because we had some network problems but I tried to uh, 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 to, uh, to, 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 uh, to answer what I understood. First, of course, um, uh, uh, what is extremely important is, as you said, to establish as, as soon as possible um, a single market. We, need, we just need to understand, and I, I, I know that uh, everybody is aware of it, but uh, uh, um, even if uh, we, 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 we're starting now um, uh, every single member state uh, in this so-called phase two, the confinement phase, uh, the virus is still here. And, uh, and obviously, for the for, for the following months, if not semesters, uh, we will have to cope with it, and uh, and, and it will not be a, a, a normal situation. And that's why, again, um, uh, uh, we started, by the way, with tourism. Tourism is extremely important for for for, for a lot of countries. It's extremely important for Austria, uh, but for but for, for a lot of countries uh, in uh, in Europe, um, tourism is one one of our most important ecosystem. Um, uh, it's uh, it's uh, 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 almost 19 million uh, uh, jobs, uh, um, 3.5 million companies, 90% of them, more than 90% of them, being less than 10 employees, and of course zero revenue, zero revenue for the past uh, uh, month and a half, and a lot of questions for. This. So yes, we need liquidity, we need liquidity for to help them to. Uh, uh, to cope with the situation, and of course, we need also to, to give some clarifications. So we work now at the level of the Commission to make sure that um, uh, we can establish some guidelines, rules, or toolbox. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we develop now this concept of toolbox. We try to put in this toolbox the kind of guidelines which are important uh, for us uh, to uh, to, uh, to have a harmonized way uh, uh, um, uh, to uh, um, uh, uh, or let's say coordinated coordinated way. To, um, to cross border uh, with the same kind of rules. Um, uh, same thing for social distancing, uh, where we will be able to reopen uh, some uh, of uh, these facilities. It could be restaurants, could be hotels, could be a resort or whatever. And of course, we need to understand also that we will not be to reopen everywhere, because of course it de is depending on the pandemic. And by the way, uh, the evolution of the pandemic does not match with our natural border within the EU. So, we're, we're, including within our, our countries, uh, we will not be able to go, to go everywhere the same way, with the same kind of rules. But at the end of the day, um, we need to make sure that um, we will have the same kind of rules for the basic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, uh, guidance that uh, we will apply to this uh, uh, sector, including to give uh, security for the tourists. If you want to go to, hopefully, you will be able. Hopefully, we will be able to go in summer uh, uh, back to uh, to some hotels uh, within our own countries. But also, hopefully, and we are working hard for this uh, elsewhere in Europe. Outside of Europe, maybe a little more complex. We all know that. But, but within New York, we hope to be able to do it. We'll present this toolbox uh, next week. Uh, we're working extremely hard to do this. It could be also being able to use um, uh, tracing apps, uh, 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 being able to, uh, to, uh, to, to use these apps crossing borders. Uh, that's also something that we are working hard. hard. We had a, 
uh, um, digital and telecommunication um, uh, 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 minister's meeting yesterday, and we, we, we are pushing to have the same. We have also a toolbox here, but everybody will apply, but to have also the same kind of uh, uh, rules and apps, hopefully, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to trace on a voluntary basis, of course. Uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the evolution of the pandemic. So we are working on many tools. Uh, we will make this public uh, next week, again, on, a, on the most harmonized way possible. Um, again, it's in two sides. I insist on this. First, to make things uh, uh, more smooth, but also to create more safety. And, uh, and when you will decide to go in a place, you will know that the rules will be the same everywhere in Europe, which will guarantee the safety which is, uh, which is needed, uh, which will be needed uh, for the following um, uh, weeks or, or, let's say, months uh, ahead of us. Uh, that's for the choice. But of course, then for internal market, it's a very large uh, subject. Um, I insist on, on one thing, which is extremely important. Um, uh, we should not underestimate the fact that within the next few um, uh, uh, weeks, uh, we will probably have, have a lot of, to cope with a lot of bankruptcies in, uh, in, in some of our countries if we don't act quickly. Uh, this is a reality. So we have to be extremely careful. This is why, again, I insist that member states should be able to, uh, to, to, to help uh, the, their um, uh, ecosystem. Some don't have the um, file, uh, fiscal space uh, to do it, then we need to do it. We need to help it. Uh, that's our own interest. If you look like, uh, for example, uh, uh, Germany is making more than 50% of their revenue uh, uh, outside of uh, selling, selling in Europe. For example, uh, uh, um, uh, um, Netherlands is 70%. So everyone is benefiting from the internal market. We need to make sure that the internal market is not broken. Uh, not only it's our responsibility, uh, but also it's our, it's uh, it's uh, interest of every single country. So um, uh, uh, my my mission as an, as a, as a commissioner of internal market is to make sure that of course we can cross border again, of course we can start to travel, of course we could make we have to make sure that especially in Austria some of the workers who are not Austrian could come back uh, to work in in um, in uh, uh, um, uh, uh, many companies including uh, for construction companies. I know, this, I know that this is, a, this is an issue. We are helping it, but it's not the only, the only thing. We need to make sure that we keep, again, the single market the way it is to be able to, uh, to, to, to rebound and to be ready uh, for the recovery. Thank you, Commissioner Bouton, for the detailed answer. I think you addressed uh, uh, many of the points that were mentioned uh, by Minister Schramberg as well. Uh, I noted that both of you mentioned the word level playing field and internal market, which I think shows that there's a lot of convergence. Uh, there was, however, over the last weeks, uh, a little bit of a debate between uh, uh, Austria and uh, the Commission on the, the state aid rules. If I understand you well on both sides, uh, this problem seems to have been solved for now because all Austrian state aid schemes have been granted for now. But what we're looking now, if I understand you, Mrs. Schramberg, for a broader reform of state aid and competition law in the future to position Europe better. Is that, have I understood this correctly? Have we solved the slight misunderstandings between Brussels and Vienna? And are we now on track to work together for a stronger, more competitive joint system? Well, are there still open not. issues? Because yes. I think uh, even though Mrs. Vestager is not there, I'm sure Mr. Breton yes. is also very informed. Yes. Huh? Yes, but uh, a half and half. So what? What? Uh, of course, we have got the the invitation for Margaret Vestager or for a continuing talks and and to continue the talks. And of course, we will accept that. I'm very happy to talk with her about it. So yes, we have got approval um, for the existing tools, which inside. Uh, the, the current uh, possibilities we have handed in, and so we have got the approval. And this was quite fast, and this was quite uh, good. However, what we found is, from the practice side, additional need and additional urgent need. I have given you uh, the examples, for example, from 800 to 2 million. Uh, this is one of the examples, or, or also softening of the uh, UID uh, difficulties that uh, companies have, because we have these special R&D companies who cannot fulfill the criteria and cannot therefore not uh, search in it. Or, for example, SME uh, guarantees 
uh, should be, in my opinion, free of charge. So I think there is room for improvement and we would need quick improvements coming back like a, a rapid prototyping. I always call it, uh, Thierry, uh, rapid, it's like rapid prototyping. Yeah? We are in a, where we need to launch um, topics uh, very quickly so that we can address 80% of the companies and then we find out, aha, we have to adjust. And unlike uh, all politics, we need to adapt very quickly because none of us have, has had this experience before. Last time it was during uh, the, uh, the crisis of the uh, Spanish Gripe, the Spanish uh, flu, yeah? and no, none of us can have this uh, experience. And therefore, we do this rapid prototyping, we develop, and here are concrete suggestions for this, and so we would be happy to continue the talks on this because I'm convinced it's there in other countries so I've talked to Hungary, Germany and others who have the same topics and doesn't mean that he has been incorrect so far but it has been uh, as it is to ad address a big amount of companies and now we have to in the rapid prototyping process to adjust and then secondly we need a uh, a reform in total reform and this is now planned for 2023 uh, uh, which I understood and my my wish would be to take it earlier because it's one of the instruments which will help us a lot and is uh, is very uh, is working uh, quite well the moment it is established in a way that we need it uh, from the practical side and I think this is where we stand at the moment so there is still disagreement uh, on some part, an agreement on others, and I think we will continue uh, the discussions, not to discuss for discussion's sake, but to get uh, the, the system evolving for the sake of the companies out there. And I know Thierry is um, in the boat for this, because we do have uh, these companies out there, you have mentioned it, which we need to help. At the moment in Austria, there is like a uh, a frozen time for bankruptcy. We do not see bankruptcy at the moment, uh, as on the contrary, we see a, a, a big reduction of this, but it is like in a vacuum. Yeah, it is at the moment, it's a special situation, but it will come second half of the year and next year, and there we need to be there, and we still have time to react and uh, to help, and this is what we are um, uh, what we are uh, searching for. Mr. Thank you, Minister, also for clarifying that uh, uh, this is an unprecedented crisis. Everybody is doing what they can to help uh, to preserve jobs uh, and companies. And I'm glad to see uh, that there are good talks between Vienna and Brussels now uh, and uh, that we are making progress. Of course, not everything is agreed yet, but at least there's progress. And I'm sure that also solutions to new and other problems will be found soon. I don't know if uh, Commissioner Breton would like to, to add yeah. something to this aspect. No, no, uh, uh, no I, 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 know, I know well, Mar uh, Margaret, and, uh, and, and, and I do uh, everything I could to help, as you know, Margaret. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and I will be always the one to push um, uh, to do things more quickly, because, uh, because uh, uh, you're right, uh, in this crisis, uh, it's also a time to review some of our rules, but we cannot wait. So, so if we have to review it, we better do it now, because we know that tomorrow will be too late. So uh, I will be on your side, Margaret, to push as much as I can to, uh, to make things happening quickly. But on the other hand, we have to be, we have to make, to, to be careful also, to make sure that we maintain I will, I will say it again, a level playing field within the whole EU. Let me give you an example. Today, um, as if we speak, uh, um, and, 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 and Germany put a fantastic plan. If I have been a Minister of Finance in Germany, this will never happen, but, but, uh, but I, I, I will love to put the plan in place, 156 billion euros, uh, voted, by the way, in less than, than, than six days in the Bundestag, so it shows that uh, when it's needed, you can do it. You can do things quickly in Germany, uh, uh, so, uh, and, and that was important. Um, but today, um, if you if we look at all the state aids um, which have been granted in the EU, more than half of it, more than fifty percent, just for Germany, uh, and, and I think it's good. But we need to make sure that everyone, every single European country, will be able to have the same access and to do it quickly also. So that's something that I have, of course, as a commissioner in South York internal market, to make sure that uh, we do this um, uh, on, a, on, on an equal basis 
in order to avoid uh, any problems uh, for the future where we could create a uh, um, counter reaction which will, be, which will be bad for everyone. So that's why again uh, um, I will help uh, Margaret as much as I can to push and to push for the reforms but you could also count on me to make sure that everyone, everyone will have the, an equal access to what is needed. Mm -hmm. Mr. Um, can I add uh, yes, something please, please to the do. tourism part, which you have uh, mentioned, Thierry, you have talked about tourism before, and I just wanted to mention something about tourism, because it makes up 15% of Austrian uh, GDP, and we have a lot of people working in tourism, tourism as you have mentioned, uh, in family business uh, and, and small business, really small uh, units. And so uh, here uh, it is important that we have also the support from the European Commission to find, as you have mentioned, common rules. So a framework of common rules for this uh, summer and the next winter to come. Um, so um, I would like to ask also for this uni uniform coordinated approach uh, for the borders. Because on the one hand side, we have the goods moving and we need to free these goods moving inside the European Union as one of the uh, important topics, but on the other hand, it would be most important for tourism, especially for smaller countries, of course, um, to have clear rules, health rules coming from the health side. So saying, for example, with this uh, um, type of uh, uh, standards that you have, with this number of infections you have, uh, you have clear rules uh, for the borders inside the European Union, especially for this tourism, so that we do not have to have these discussions on a, uh, on a bilateral basis. I think this could, uh, is one of the sectors which I'm worried most about, uh, even if I'm not directly responsible, but it's part of the Austrian economy and 15% of our GDP, and I know also from other countries, especially the smaller ones. So if I could suggest common criteria uh, for this tourism and the crossing of borders, uh, this would really help us all and avoid a lot of uh, negative uh, discussions that we have uh, at the moment, uh, especially for, uh, for this field. So this is something I just wanted uh, to, to reflect on what has been said on tourism before we move on. Minister, you, you're making our job very easy today because we don't have to bring up new issues because you bring them up yourself, which is very good uh, because we have a lot of issues we want to talk about anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Commissioner, do you want to comment on, on, the, uh, on the topic of tourism and the question of freedom of movement that the minister just mentioned? No, I already, I think I, I, think, I already yeah, I think I already mentioned it. We are working on it. Uh, we will issue um, um, our, our, our toolbox uh, um, uh, um, uh, next week. Um, and again, this is health and safety. It is, a, it is a, a mobility and, and, and cross-border. And I insist on the fact, huh, uh, we, 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 and you're right, Margaret, to speak about, about cross-border because we need to make sure that we can have the um, uh, sort of same kind of rules or, uh, uh, to cross-border. But I, I insist also on mobility because in order to go there, uh, um, of course, you may go by car, by car fine. Uh, if you go by train, then we will have to have uh, the, the same rules uh, in, in terms of social distancing. See, we are working on this too. Uh, for plants, of course, the same story. So you see, this is a, this is a very wide uh, uh, problem that we are um, uh, uh, working on. But I, I, have, I have good hope that we will be able, will be able to land with something uh, which will be uh, comprehensive uh, and which will be uh, hopefully um, uh, helpful, even if at the end of the day, you know, uh, like me, that. Um, uh, uh, what will uh, uh, be important is uh, the decision of the health authorities, uh, which will have to say to, to, say, to have the last word on, on, uh, on where you will be able to go, how you will be able to go, including in Austria, if you still have some uh, some some areas where, which are not yet totally uh, quote unquote uh, safe. Uh, same thing, of course, everywhere in Europe. So we 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 are we handling all these um, uh, different situations. But, uh, but uh, again, uh, I hope we will be, you will be able to, to, uh, uh, to start to use the toolbox uh, 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 next week and that it will be helpful for the tourist industry because I am like you, you know, it was the first ecosystem 
um, that I wanted to, to go public with because I know uh, the situation that uh, um, all these small companies are, are, are cropping with. By the way, we discussed uh, even me and my friend on, on, on this subject uh, many times together, and uh, and uh, uh, hopefully it will be uh, it will be helpful for them. But but we have to be realistic also. I mean, uh, um, uh, if we start, if we can reopen, uh, uh, it will be it will be fantastic. But the se the season will be extremely bad versus what it has been, of course. Huh? I just want to give you the figures huh, that, we, that, that that we are. Huh? Figures that for the oil tourism industry in Q2 will be maximum, maximum 10% of what, in revenue of what was achieved last year at the same quarter. And now we worked on a plan that I have yet have here. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, uh, it's, of course it's a plan, but uh, but we we we, um, uh, we we hope that that maybe um, uh, it will be uh, a little bit better uh, in, in in Q3 and in Q4. Um, but uh, but still, uh, uh, the revenue expecting uh, in, in, in the oil industry will be probably, if everything is good, uh, not more than 50% of what it has been last year. So, I mean, this is where we are here again. We need also to work on this package uh, um, uh, for the recovery fund. One side being liquidity and grants, the other side be, be, being allowing maybe loans, more long-term loans, to help also the tourism industry to reinvent itself, and this is why I, 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 I convened a big uh, a big meeting, a big forum. Uh, hopefully, just after the summer, if we can convene again uh, together with all the key players of the tourism industry um, to draw to start to draw the first conclusion, if I may say so. Uh, we will still be, of course, in the crisis, uh, but hopefully, in a better situation or better shape than we are today, and of course, to start to think. Uh, uh, what about a more sustainable tourism, uh, um, including more digital in it, uh, uh, taking in consideration the platforms, uh, being more green. Uh, in other words, uh, using um, the, 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 the two digital trends that uh, uh, we highlighted when we presented the whole industrial strategy for Europe, uh, more digital and of course more green, and uh, how to see uh, um, we could accelerate these trends and helping also the industry to benefit from it and uh, to start to transform. If I can just uh, for our audience draw a line here because I think there on the issue of tourism we saw both of you favor a common European approach uh, and uh, if possible not bilateral solution, common criteria how to progressively open uh, to uh, tourism where this is possible and reconcilable with the public health considerations which might take precedence and from that I also take that you both see that this year there will be some tourism possible but it will not go back to what we are used uh, from, from last year. Therefore the importance of the third element that uh, Commissioner Breton just mentioned the recovery instrument, the recovery plan on which the Commission is working. Uh, Mr. Schamburg, if I can turn to you, because Mr. Breton and his colleagues are still working on uh, the recovery instrument for next, e next week and the, uh, the uh, links to the multi-annual financial framework. What is your expectation uh, on tourism, but beyond that, uh, how much money do we need uh, to really recover Europe from a crisis of uh, more than 7% uh, of uh, GDP shrinking uh, this year, according to the estimates that can, as Mr. Breton reminded us, uh, be even bigger, uh, up to 12 or 15%, as Christine Lagarde once said. Uh, wh wh how much money is needed and where do we find this money for this Marshall Plan that we need after this unprecedented uh, crisis? Huh? And what are your expectations to the Commission, to the EU institutions, and what is Austria ready to contribute to these efforts? Well, it's in, uh, difficult just to give one number, but I think it's a common effort uh, which uh, uh, the European Commission can do, what can the countries do, what can the municipalities do, uh, the cities, the smaller cities do, all across Europe. And I think here, from uh, we have a shock on both sides. We have a shock on the demand side and a shock on the production side for the value chains. So we need to first 
um, to, um, to have this uh, um, demand functioning again. So we will never have enough money to, uh, to uh, do everything for uh, the economy, what is needed. So what we need to come first from this first step, what, where we get, uh, give safety as a state, this is our role and this is the role of the state, um, to give the safety to the companies, to get liquidity in the short term, to get the grants. But then now we need to do the frame conditions and the conditions need to be there that the economy can restart and function itself. Because um, there we can never do uh, enough uh, to uh, uh, re-establish everything, uh, but it needs to be uh, that we do the conditions, the frame conditions, that uh, economy can also uh, re get a recover uh, itself. And one important topic is demand. I'm very much convinced that we need to give impulse to demand, uh, and this means, contrary to what others might think, tax cuts, tax reductions. We will need for the smaller and medium-sized income, and this is what we are planning to do in the short run, rather earlier than later, uh, to reduce taxes um, for the income so people have more uh, in their pocket, um, more money available to spend. Because what is worrying me most is that we can see that people uh, start, of course, not to consume, but uh, start to put the money uh, back. So we need to make, uh, give them security that there is enough money for them and that their jobs are secured. So that is these two topics is demand stimulation. We will need the toolbox, as Thierry has uh, correctly put, a toolbox for demand stimulation and that might look different from country to country. For Austria, one of the toolbox will be a tax reduction for smaller and medium-sized incomes very soon. Then uh, the other side will be on the production side. So how do we have incentives for uh, investments? And especially we are talking a lot with experts, what is the right time for these investments? So uh, for these incentives for investments, they might now not be needed now, immediately now, but in, we need to work them out quickly so that uh, companies can rely uh, on the fact that these incentives will come. So it's all about trust both on the side of the consumers and both of the side of the, the companies producing either services or products or uh, combined services and products. And so this is what we are working hard on and there will be money necessary uh, in our first um, part was 38 uh, billion uh, for the immediate aid and of course we will need uh, additional money for the second part for the comeback um, and uh, this will be also a combination between what uh, Europe can do and what we can do as a government and the municipalities can do. So we are working on that and as, as on the Commission side we feel the necessity to be very quick on that. So it will be available in the next two weeks uh, already. So to give this uh, security to businesses both and people in the business so that we can save as many jobs as possible. Can we save all the jobs? No, we cannot uh, save all the jobs, uh, but we can get them back as quickly as possible in their normal lives. Uh, and this is what we are targeting for. Mr. Commissioner, what can you tell us about the talks regarding the uh, recovery fund, regarding the establishment of the recovery fund? You've mentioned before the importance of a level playing field, now, you've also mentioned that the corona pandemia is a, a, a systemic shock. Uh, it is a shock that, that hits everyone, but not everyone has the same financial possibilities. We've just listened to the Austrian situation. Not everyone has the same uh, financial leeway to get out of the situation. So how can the recovery fund make sure that we actually um, help everyone but help those who are even more in need uh, than, than others, I would say. And where do you see the balance uh, between uh, loans and subsidies, for example? What is your reaction to what the minister just said? Yeah. Uh, first, uh, I, I see my great presented a very, a very Korean plan, and I think it's, uh, it's exactly what, 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 what should be done. But uh, uh, what Margaret uh, um, uh, did not mention, is that uh, Austria has not the first euro available 
to finance all this plan. Austria will need to borrow it. Right, Margaret? Yes. You, yeah. and like, like all the countries, yeah. That's exactly what, where I wanted to go, like everyone. What is something extraordinary in this crisis is that, and I want to be very clear, not one single country has the first euro available to cope with the situation. Everyone will have to borrow, some we say to beg, to have the money to do it. No one has the first euro available. Everyone will need to borrow it. And that's something extremely new on the planet. Extremely new. By the way, including the US, of course. Huh? That's extremely new. And of course, you have two things to look at it carefully. First, the past. And uh, sorry to speak about myself, but when I've been a minister, I have been a strong advocate to make sure that we were keeping, maintaining the Maastricht Quartal in my country. And we did when I was Minister of Finance, including for debt and including for deficit. But maybe the first time and the last time, but we did. And it was my mission and my job as a Minister of Finance to do it. Past is the past. Now, for the coronavirus situation, which will last what it will last, we just have to make sure that just for what is needed for the situation, everyone will need to have access to finance its own recovery plan, will be able to find the liquidity which will be necessary to do it. And I think it's just our job, our mission, at the EU level, to make sure that this will happen. And that's, that's why we believe it's important, of course, to make sure that with the tools that um, the uh, European Council asked us to work on, in other words, a recovery fund, because as you know, for the last European Council, um, member states uh, asked uh, President Charles Michel to task the Commission uh, to try to evaluate what was needed at the level of the EU in terms of recovery fund and uh, also to propose uh, a, um, a way to put this in place. Could be, as uh, Martin mentioned, in the MFF, could be elsewhere. We are working now to see if we can put it in the MFF. But of course, the first task is to understand what is the magnitude of what is needed at the level of the EU. It's just a basic way of working. Uh, uh, before starting to speak about the tool, let's start to speak about the needs. And then uh, the, the Council asked more precisely the Commission to work uh, specifically sector per sector or industrial ecosystem per industrial ecosystem to try to evaluate what will be needed for the repair, quote unquote, side of the fund, and what will be needed for the uh, recovery uh, part of the fund. Of course, for the repair, it will be probably more grants. For the recovery, probably more loans, or long-term loans. And, uh, and, 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 and I think that what is extremely important is now to finalize uh, this, um, uh, this uh, uh, evaluation, and we are in the process to do this, uh, um, uh, as requested by uh, uh, Member States and by the Council, and then, of course, um, uh, to discuss together with Member States um, how to do this. But at the end of the day, uh, I think we should uh, look at, uh, at this uh, as uh, um, um, an exercise uh, to uh, be able to uh, 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 put on the table the right tools for everyone to uh, be able to have access to what is needed uh, uh, in their own uh, country, in their own ecosystems. Of course, uh, with some conditionality, I think it's fair to have some conditionality, including, for example, for the recovery part. And personally, I'm advocating uh, that for the recovery part, um, uh, uh, we will uh, uh, probably uh, encourage 
as much as we as we can the three uh, dimension of the industrial strategy uh, that is supported for Europe, the Green Deal, so everything which will be able to uh, push uh, and enhance uh, the, 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 the green transition will be important. The digitization, everything in the recovery plan which will be able to push and accelerate uh, the digitization of uh, industry will be important. And of course the re resilience part, and the resilience part means probably uh, to see if in some industries, some sectors, and we had a discussion with Margaret about antibiotics, Margaret, uh, 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 we, we may uh, favor maybe to uh, uh, relocate uh, uh, some industry. Of course, not everything. Uh, we, we, we are not at all naive. We don't say that it's the end of globalization, which would be stupid. No, we just say that in the resilience part, for, for some of our industries, it would be important to diversify uh, the supply chain, probably, uh, and slash or to uh, um, relocate some of our activities when it makes sense. And by the way, uh, using the new evolution of our uh, industrial strategy, uh, uh, more circular, and when we speak about circular um, um, uh, uh, industry, I mean, it means that our economy, it means that, of course, it will be more local, uh, including for more, more industries where you could now add some more uh, uh, digital factories within, uh, with 3D printers and everything, uh, which will allow you now to uh, relocate some activities of some part, including the fact that for uh, the, um, the way um, uh, our fellow citizens uh, uh, or companies may use the product produced by industries will be more uh, look at uh, uh, paper use, than our ownership uh, situation. And all these things uh, will have to be put together uh, to, to um, probably to accelerate uh, and to, uh, to enhance uh, the uh, uh, um, recovery part with some conditionality. Um, Mr. Commissioner, a follow-up follow question. Do I understand you correctly that uh, there will be no postponement of the uh, Green Deal objectives? It, they won't be diluted? So when it comes to supporting investment, when it comes to financial support, be it loans or subsidies, um, the Green Deal will be, will be at the core. And will, be, will there be ecological conditionalities, conditions to fulfill as well? Again, uh, uh, I, I, could, I, could, I could easily say that yes, it will be no postponement at all. So the answer is yes. Uh, we will continue, of course, on this strategy, which is absolutely critical. It will be just tragic. Uh, uh, if, we, if, we, if we decided to postpone. So we will continue, of course, uh, exactly on the trend we, we, we have, we have uh, um, uh, announced. And by the way, uh, uh, when we are coping with a crisis of this magnitude, what history teaches us is that uh, uh, most of the time, um, uh, in uh, crisis of this magnitude amplify, accelerate, as a trend. So it will accelerate uh, more green, being more, more conscious of what we are uh, all together on the planet. Uh, the relation with uh, uh, us and, and the environment, uh, our vulnerability alone or together. So yes, green deal will be more important than ever. Uh, yes, digitization, uh, where now uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, 4.5 billion uh, human beings have been confined for five, six, eight weeks. And of course, now everyone uh, is even more uh, familiar with all the tools uh, that we know, Margaret and myself, because we are working in the same industry for uh, 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 teleworking, uh, e-learning, um, uh, and of course, uh, uh, socializing through, uh, through, through platforms and everything. And, and of course, it will be accelerated. And then, of course, resilience. You see all these debates today between the US and China. That's an important debate. Unfortunately, I, 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 I'm afraid that this debate will be enhanced uh, or accelerated, unfortunately, uh, after the crisis. So yes, resilience will be even more important. So that's an acceleration. So to the answer to your question is, of course, uh, uh, we will uh, continue to, uh, 
to, to not only to, to, to keep our objective, but also maybe to use, if I may say so, the crisis is not over yet, so we have to be cautious, but to use it to, uh, to accelerate uh, these trends, including, of course, uh, in the Green Deal. Mrs. Schramberg, uh, we have a question here uh, from Facebook uh, addressed, I think, mainly to you. Uh, the, the question is, what is the future of the Austrian airline hour? Uh, can uh, the state do something to support it, and should it? Uh, I think the, uh, the, 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 the citizen from Lower Austria would like to know uh, about the future of our, huh? and I'm sure you can tell us as much as you can at this moment in time. Yes, thank you. I will come back to this question. Definitely, I had expected it today <laughs> in the press conference, but it's not was not there. It's here. Um, but let me enough. first uh, have a few uh, a few inputs also on a few, a few things from my side added to what has been said uh, so rightly uh, by Thierry. First of all, uh, he was mentioning the resilience uh, of an economy. So we need to work together hard, together with the Commission, uh, to get a stronger economy, more independent. And by more independent in Europe, I do not mean less globalization. It's not the one or other, but it is a new way of thinking about how we work and what we do in Europe. So what we have done so far in, in a very good way is in the R&D sector. So we have put a lot of money in there. But what we have um, unfortunately neglect, neglected, and we know this because we come from an economy, Thierry and myself, where this, this is a, an example which shows exactly what we have not done in the right way, what politics has not done in the right way in the last 15 years. So if we look at the IT and telecom sector, we can exactly see that we have lost a lot of companies in Europe, taking a few examples, companies which I have worked for, for example, Alcatel and others, which just disappeared from the European and the global screen. So what we need is to um, add to the R&D the topic of manufacturing in Europe. It needs to be done in the healthcare sector and in other sectors, in the R&D intensive sectors, we also need to manufacture in Europe. And there we have an instrument which is not long here, but it is here since some time, and I think it has been actually worked out also by the previous com commission. It is the IPSE, Important Project of Common European Interest. And here we have the tool. We have the tool in, in our hands, which we can put on the semiconductor, which we can put on the uh, Wasserstoff, what's that in English? Wasserstoff, se uh, oxy, um, hydrogen, 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 that's hydrogen. The, hydrogen, that's the right. And what we also can now put in the healthcare sector for the production of medicine. So uh, here also I have a wish, and one wish would be if we could further develop the IPSE to a very, very uh, quick tool that we are uh, here, and I know Thierry is working on that, and maybe also that not only the uh, countries can put money inside, but also maybe we find a possibility for the European Commission to put money inside, um, also to have this co-investment alongside to say we want R&D and high intensive digitalized uh, uh, R&D, but also digitalized production. And here I come to the Green Deal. When we talk about bringing production back into Europe, we talk about uh, green production. We talk about highly automized, digitalized production. So I even dare to say that uh, a ton of steel produced in Europe is, and for example, in Austria with FIRST, is, uh, is adding to uh, protecting the environment instead of producing it in China. So you have both, not there, the transport, uh, and second, you have this highly modernized uh, way of production so that you can put this production inside uh, like a city of Linz where this production is taking place and you have still high quality of living. So yes, we need the uh, Green Deal also to be continued and of course we need to uh, take care of all the jobs uh, that we need because we need, if people uh, do have a job, they can take care of the environment and I think this is a uh, very high priority. Um, for the digitalization, I can agree to what Thierry has said. We also have three uh, major topics. We take digitalization, Green Deal and education. I look at the time and Austrian Airlines, I cannot say more than has been said so far. I think we've started out the discussion with, with you, Madam Minister, <laughs> maybe the last word for, for the Commissioner. 
And perhaps with a, no. with a concrete question, Commissioner, that is uh, uh, arriving from a citizen here in Austria via Facebook, uh, who is asking, um, will we get better as Europeans out of this crisis than the US and China, or will we lose out in the global competitive game after Corona? What is your optimistic or pessimistic view, uh, Commissioner? My optimistic view is that um, um, I think that uh, uh, after this crisis, uh, one world, one single world, will uh, will uh, jump in, and this world will be solidarity. We have seen within our own countries the unbelievable solidarities between the fellow citizens of all our uh, our countries in Austria, in Italy, in France. At eight o'clock at night, everyone in Europe applauding the one were working like hell to, um, uh, to try to, to do their best to support uh, uh, the one affected by this tragedy. We have seen solidarities within our own countries with the one continue to work even if most of the population was confined. Even if it was not the, big, the case at the beginning, we have seen some solidarity between us in Europe. After the first two weeks of everyone was so shocked that we had to cope with reactions, but then solidarity was here. I hope that we will see solidarities while working with the correct fund to make sure that everyone will have the same right of access to what is needed. But solidarity also between continents. I just remind you that when, coming back to the first, your, your first question, um, when China was hit, they were lost. They asked for our, they asked for help. And we were here, Europe. We sent 56 tons of masks, PPE, gloves, ventilators. 250 million euros to help them in January because they were not able to support themselves. The amputee. Then it came back. By the way, we have been uh, 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 watching carefully not to humiliate anyone. They were requesting us to do it without any cameras. We did it without any cameras. Solidarity also with Africa that we need, that we know that Africa will need us. So in other words, uh, my um, uh, hope, but also uh, what I forecast is that solidarity will become um, probably more important than ever. So uh, if we uh, recover all together with this world, we will be stronger, stronger together. Thank you, Commissioner. Mrs. Schramberg, a last word on solidarity? Well, uh, I think what it has shown us is that uh, uh, the people are working hard together to get back to their normal lives. And uh, I give my full respect to everybody who's out there in the hospitals, but also in the smaller companies who are now recovering, taking care of the employees. And I think this is something which has shown in this time and also that they are so innovative, that everybody's uh, thinking of how to invent new topics, how to be able to uh, get uh, yeah, uh, around this, uh, this uh, big crisis. It is still there, it's not yet over. And they all have my full support. We do all that we can uh, to get the right frame conditions together, also with the European uh, Commission to help. Uh, on a fair basis and uh, uh, on the basis uh, that uh, we can all together recover. Minister Schramberg, uh, Commissioner Breton, I think we've covered a lot of ground in, in 60 minutes and, and I think one thing which is really important is that we're not alone on this planet and that we have to uh, think in wider terms and look across border. Uh, you've mentioned the concept of solidarity and of, of help, and we're not on an island, but we all depend on each other. So we'd rather um, find ways and new concepts to, to, to recover out of this crisis and to get stronger out of this crisis. I think that is, that is one, one important lesson. Uh, can I thank you very, very much for, for joining us here today? 
Um, I think this is a very important or the important contribution to our uh, week of European debates here in Vienna, Austria. Um, thank you very much. My gratitude also to, to Martin for, for, for letting me co-chair this together with him. Um, stay well, um, and I think this will be continued. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, thanks. Have a happy Europe Day on the 9th of May. Uh, happy 25 years of Austria in the European Union, and we are looking forward to work together, sometimes with differences of opinion, for a stronger European Union after this crisis. Thank you, Mrs. Schramburg. Thank you, Commissioner Breton, and have a very good day, and stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Herzlichen Dank. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Thank you.